So today we're putting some LVP on some steps and um, because this is a chipboard uh, or some uh, um, I am putting an underlayment on it that way it's smoothing it out because this is this is just too rough to put a glue down product on it even if it's a uh, um, an LVP it's still going even if we sand it or whatever it's still going to be too rough to put an LVP on it because it is a glue down product so any little imperfections is going to show up so we're going to make it nice and smooth as you can see the landings and those steps right there we already have underlayment on them and um, I'm using four by eight sheets of underlayment and these steps are about 40 inches they range the bottom ones they've all been different each set has been different in the widths i don't know why but anyway they have so i started out i think 39 and 3 8 and now up at this last section right here is actually 41 and 3 8 so they've gained two inches in width going up each set of steps they get a little bit wider so um, I recently did a video here at this same job on how to prep your floor for underlayment so I'm not going to go into that but I will leave a little teaser click right here for you to look at if if you want to see how to get your steps ready for underlayment and that is given that you don't have carpet or anything on it naturally that's after you pull the carpet off or whatever you have on there this video right here will show you how to uh, clean them up and what needs to be done to get these smooth enough and good enough to put underlayment on because underlayment is not a fix-all if there's issues with these and you staple your underlayment down there's still going to be issues so you have to get these right in order to put your underlayment down so um, we've we won't get into that because I've got another video on that and let's look right over here so we're using four by eight sheets and I'm able to get one two three four five six seven eight nine steps out of each one you can see there are some of them's a little different so I got this one here is just a little bit smaller than these on the flight this is one flight plus this this right here actually goes with this there's five steps per flight and these five go to another uh, to the second flight there so this one was a little bit shorter so I marked it a half that way I know what it is this one was just a little bit crooked so I marked it five eighths and three quarters on each end that way I would know how to place it on the steps anyways we're going to go ahead and get get all these steps cut up and then we'll get them stapled on So now that we got our uh, steps cut, our underlayment cut to go on our steps, I'm going to go ahead and staple them on there. I'm using a boss stitch uh, staple gun with some um, 7/8 staples. Typically, I will use a three-quarter inch staple, but I bought them all out the other day at the store I stopped at, so I had to get a box of 7/8. So with the type of transition piece that's going on here it's just an, a regular stair nose that's going to be on there uh, with glue when I get finished so um, 
the main thing about putting these on here, you don't want them hanging over, okay? Um, if, if you got them hanging over a quarter inch or something like that, that's going to create just a little weak spot right there. You don't want everybody, whenever they walk down the steps, walks on the edge, okay? So you definitely don't want a weak point on the edge of your step. So make sure that's not hanging over there. Um, again, on the edge, I'm going to put it just like it's a seam, just like a, a seam in the underlayment, and I'm going to go about every edge, I mean, about every inch right here. And then typically, whenever you're nailing or stapling underlayment down, you want to go about every four inches. You don't want a span over, uh, at, at the most, six inches. You don't want to go over six inches. Say so between staples, you don't want no more than six inches at the most. I try to keep it about four inches. If I see a spot that's got a little big area uh, that don't have a staple, I'll just go back and put a little staple in there. Okay, so I'm going to continue on, get the rest of these nailed off, and then we'll go from there. So as you can see, as she's going up and down the steps there, on the edge of the bullnose there, you can see there's some of it that's a little boogered up. That's not going to matter one bit because the bullnose that we're putting on there is, um, it's got about maybe an inch and a half on top or an inch and a half on the bottom. And so it's got some really good coverage. It might even be two inches. I haven't put a tape measure on it yet. But it's a nice fat uh, stair nosing that we're going to be putting on that. So the little chips and splinters on the very edge don't matter whatsoever. And on the risers, as you can see, um, I'm not putting any on there. It's, I don't think it's necessary. Um, what makes pressure sensitive glue uh, really adhere real good is whenever it gets pressure on it. And it gets uh, walked on or rolled or whatever. So that's basically just going to be there to look pretty, the LVP there. So it's not going to be um, real absorbed onto this and show the, show the little bit of roughness there. Like I said, the, the stair nose is going to come down to about right here. And it's going to cover about that much of the edge. So i got a lot of covers. There's just going to be a strip right here showing of the LVP. So with that not been walked on the glue is pretty much just going to hold it there in place and i don't think it's important to um, put underlayment on that a couple of them i did like uh, right there by my wife's feet you can look right there the guy actually had some trim there so i took that off and filled it in with some underlayment and um, it was really rough and on the front of this right here was really rough where they joined the other thing I mean it was like really bad so I, I couldn't I even had to be careful where I stapled because um, I didn't want it to sink in so I put it here just for that reason because it was too rough to even glue a flat piece of wood to so anyway I'm going to carry on
Okay, we're ready to clean them up and we'll be ready to spread some glue. I'm not going to go into detail all about that. You can just pretty much use your own preference. As I was stapling, I was looking to see if any um, if any staples didn't sink all the way and I took care of them as I was doing them. Like right there is when I accidentally just shot when I was sitting here and I didn't even mean to. So um, Pretty much all I got to do is clean them up, sweep over them, and they are ready for some LVP. So we're going to go from there. <coughs> so we are applying the pressure sensitive glue to the steps and risers now. And I found this. It's always kind of a mess to do something to spread glue on a wall like that. So um, I found that it's easier. Just get you a little bit of glue on there, push it up, okay? Push it up. You can look at. Uh, All this mess right here it's not going to matter this is actually set in just a little bit than from the riser that's why it's kind of gobbed up right there but that's not going to matter one bit because of the great big old stair nosing that we're going to be putting on it's going to cover a lot so but at the same time down here where it's not going to be covered pressure sensitive glue dries kind of like rubber so if you leave a gob of it on here there's going to be like a rubber piece there it's going to, it's going to be like you have something under under your vinyl or under the vinyl slank like a piece of garbage or something you'll see it so you still don't want to leave no big humps um, on the flat surface like I said it is here on this because there's a little bit of a lip right there from where the riser meets the tread the tread sits on top of it and some of these are sticking out just a little bit further which is just enough to catch a little bit of glue which is totally not going to matter so that's why you see that and I'm just kind of fast light if I just pull it off it's just going to run and be a big gob right here in the crevice of the of the step and I don't want that so I'm going to kind of just do it a little bit faster so now I've got about an inch in between there and it's not going to be so messy work our glue up on the riser. Okay, so um, we're here installing some LVP on the steps and what I've done, I went ahead and took my measurement from right across like so to the edge and I went ahead and cut me the risers and one piece of the treads and then I'm sticking those on and then the other piece is going to have to be ripped down because I don't have a piece that will fit. They're uh, five, six and seven inch planks and the step happens to be about ten and a half so I'm using a five and a six and I'm ripping about a half inch off the five which they do vary just a little bit so that's why I've waited to do those for last and I will make all those cuts once I get done there so right now I am placing all of these on the back and I choose to put these on the back first rather than uh, now you, can you see that crack right there this is going to be it. There's not going to be any trim or anything like that here. Are you good? So that's not acceptable. I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to shave it on the one corner. So we get a nice clean edge right there. And we want to 
want to make these look naturally as good as we possibly can because there is no trim going down so that's why I'm taking extra precaution and making those fit really nice and good there they're not a hundred percent square so I'm working each piece as it need, needs to be to make it fit right. Okay, I can handle that. You want to get a look right there? That is acceptable. And then um, I am placing the risers on top of that. That way if there's any kind of little gap, that way if there's any kind of little gap or anything between the piece that I just put on there and the, and the riser, I got the thickness of this I have to allow right back here. So you can see there's a tiny little gap right there. Well, when I place this there, this is going to take care of that so that's the reason why I have chosen to put the riser on last it gives it a nice clean finish and again nothing's going in this corner so if the steps are a little bit uneven or something and I need to trim a corner notice that I'm looking down and you, a, a tiny little bitty gap is I'm going to be okay with but how I'm judging if it's not going to be acceptable if I can get down like this and look and see the shiny glue under it I'm not going to have it I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to trim it where it's necessary so that it gets a nice clean fit and this needs just a wee bit off of this corner here and that should take care of it we should be able to have a nice clean finish after that so I'm not really sticking it sticking it yet I'm just kind of getting it there and looking under to see what it needs to to see if it's acceptable and I think that done it right there I think okay yeah I can live with that so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that push it all the way this direction and I want to push it down not too much because if it bows if the floor is uneven or anything it's just going to pull right back up so we pretty much want to leave it to itself but we want to try to eliminate any gap at the bottom so okay I got one more to do like that let's see what this looks like See? okay that's a nice fit I can handle that right there so I'm just gonna push it back and push it down in the glue that's gonna be good on that okay one more riser to put on and then I will be um, cutting the final pieces to go on there I'll measure them and cut all of them the same as I did these I'll get them all pre-cut so let me just stick it up there as you'll notice they're not quite as tall they don't go all the way to the top which that's okay um, whenever I put my trim on I'll show you so everything looks good right here and everything looks good here this one is good I don't have to do any trimming or anything like that so I'm going to just rub that in the glue and I will take kind of pound it on there and I got a little hand roller as well I'm going to roll it in there right here is what I've been taking this and just rolling it on there real good make sure it gets stuck real good and the the, tr the treads the part that you walk on I've just been kind of walking them down in the glue after I get them done which is going to be good enough so okay. okay 
So now, I'm going to take and, uh, I don't want them all solid pieces on there, so. I have been staggering them out just a little bit, that way it's not all solid pieces on there. So I'm going to take, go ahead and put that on there. I'm just going to take my knife and cut that off rather than straight edging that on there since it's such a small piece. And um, the main thing is that it don't hang over the edge because we don't want it to be a, a weak spot there. So long, if it's back a little bit, that's okay. But if it's hanging over, that's going to create a weak point. So. I'm going to go ahead and just put this on there and do the same thing on that because it cuts pretty easy like that. So, go ahead and place this and mash it in the glue there. And again, I'm going to take my knife. I'm looking here. I'm just going to cut. I got plenty of play so I don't have to be 100% precise on this edge because there is a trim piece going over and there's trim piece going over here too. So like I said, I don't have to be precise. And if you ever do this, you will have to have a stair nosing on it, which is what we're going to put on it. So you'll see when you do it that you don't have to be precise on it. This is an open staircase and the contractor is putting some trim on the edges to take care of that. So we don't have to worry about that. And um, I do have to straight edge what I just cut off of there. What I cut off right here I'm going to use on my next step right there. So I need to get a straight edge on it so it butts up really good to this. So I'm going to take my little framing square here and I'm going to pull it to with my thumb so I don't slip and cut the bottom piece. Bend it backwards and it snaps right off. Okay, let's see how this looks and see if it needs any extra attention. And I think that is going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and shave that off, just what it needs there. Once I feel what I need, I kind of use my thumb as a guide right there to kind of guide me in a straight line. I'll show you on the next cut what I'm talking about there. So I'm going to go ahead and place my next piece on there. And make sure it's all good, the joints are good together, and give it a mash down in the glue there. Once again, I am going to look here and here and just cut this off. And I will straighten that up in just a second because I'll use it for a starter again. Okay, so I don't know if you're going to see this. Using my thumb right there as a straight reference once again. side straight and I think on the last one I'll just use a full piece it ain't gonna hurt to have all full ones on one step so I will just run with that on the very last one up there got to do just a little shave on this one as well I'm gonna, nice and tight 
and when I'm cutting like that I'm not did you see that I'm not actually pulling back I just keep my hand here and I pull away with this this is placed and steady right against my body like that that way when it slips this will pull away and I don't pull my knife to me so that's a safety precaution there that I've just kind of gotten used to over the years so that I don't have any more accidents than I do which if you're using razor knife all the time you're bound to get cut sometime but every time can be less often than more often if you just use a little bit of precaution preventative thinking if you start to cut a certain way and you feel like ooh I could cut myself like that stop what you're doing and change up you can look at the video I got if I cut my fingertip off and you can do some serious damage in just a second with a razor knife so by all means stop and um, do something different don't take the chance it's not worth it these things will cut right through you and you won't even know it you won't even feel the meat cut it'll just be done So this time, since I'm coming the other way, I'm just kind of watching and I'm shaving about a quarter inch off and I know that's going to be good. Okay. Bend it back there to make a break off. That works out just fine. So we are down to putting the stair treads on. They started getting these outside pieces put on, but they didn't finish. So I've got a piece of that on the rest of the steps that I'm just going to put there give myself a mark and just cut my stair nose into that mark but anyway while we're here I want to show you how to install the stair nose and to finish off the steps and first thing I want to do is take my measurement I want to be as precise as possible and it looks like I am about 40 and 9 40 and 9 sixteenths looks like it's going to be pretty good so it is aluminum so let's go downstairs and take a look and we'll show you how to cut it so this is our stair nosing right here it's uh aluminum as you can see underneath there And I'm going to use just my regular miter saw to do this and um, what I got going on here I got a 60 tooth carbon tipped blade on my on my saw and just a 2x4 here and what I do I will set that down make sure it's real nice and flat right here and just cut through it as I cut through the 2x4 and it'll give me a nice smooth cut right here so it is 40 and 9 sixteenths and I whew, mercy Up and down the steps, hard, ain't man I've been doing it for this is day number six so I got my mark right there and what I want to do is just cut right beside my mark So I'm actually going to cut right beside my mark. Let's see here. Right there. Okay. Okay. So you can see there we have a super super clean cut you cannot do that with a pair of 10 snips by no means you can do 45s or anything you want to just
just like that with that process I showed you. I actually got a video on that, on how to cut stair nosing. Okay, let's go upstairs and I'll show you how to put this put this on. All right, so these don't get nailed or screwed or anything. They strictly get glued on here. So in order to get your glue to adhere to this, this is a shiny little slick surface so the glue is not going to bond very good to that so I got an 80 grit uh, sanding block that's going to fit in between this white and the back right there and I'm just going to rough this up I'll let you see the difference after I get done it's just giving it a little bit of texture so that the glue will stick to it is the reason why I'm doing this I'm going to make it a little coarse Where it's not all shiny and slick. You can tell a difference in that from a while ago. It was all slick and shiny. Now it's kind of dull and textured. Can you tell a difference in it? Yeah, maybe. Okay, well that's that's good enough then. Okay, so now I just want to take and rub that off with a cloth, make sure I get all the dust off of it. And um, what I want to do is just set this right here push it all the way in like that and then I'm going to back it out maybe an eighth to a quarter inch okay and I'm going to put me a mark with my pencil I backed it up that way whenever I put it on there my mark will be covered up because I'm fixing to have to do something I'm going to have to sand this just like I did the stair nose in itself so now whenever I put that on there and push it up it's going to cover my mark so I got this 80 grit right here on my orbital I'm just going to stay on this side of that line and I'm going to rough this up just a little bit just so again to get a texture so it's not all smooth and got a finish on it so that the glue will hold good so I'm sure that you can see that plainly that is real nice and rough it's got a good coarse texture now I'm wiping the dust out of it with a damp cloth and um, I'm going to take my PL8 is what I'm using here you can see that And I'm going to make this in little swirlies. I want to make sure I get plenty on here. I don't want to be scared to use this, okay? Because this is going to take a lot of abuse. So, I'm going to just about like so, all the way down. That's going to leave nice and a nice amount just doing a little squiggly line like that all the way down the piece okay you know that board right behind you 
right around the corner to set this on. That's to keep it from oozing out. Okay, now that I got this PL8 all over it, what this white strip is, is a little sticky. So I'm gonna peel this off and it's gonna reveal a sticky surface. It's like a pill and stick thing there. You see all the colors of the rainbow in that. Anyway. It's got glue on it. So when I put this on there, I wanna kinda put it back and push it forward, okay? I don't wanna set it straight down on there because I don't want that to ooze out. But yet, at the same time, I don't want to push it all the way down on there until I get it where I want it because I want that sticky band right there, that white sticky part that I just peeled off. I want it to be right where it needs to be whenever I set it down, okay? So I'm not going to, again, set it all the way on there until I get it all the way back, okay? And once I get it all the way back, now I'm gonna smash her down. Okay, now that sticky strip on there is going to hold that in place until the PL8 sets up and grabs a hold and it does definitely grab a hold. This is not the first time I've done this and it works excellent. So I will give you a look at the finished product right there. So this is what they're all going to look like. You can see the transition piece here. Nice and tight up against the walls because there's not going to be any else thing done to it. And I'll back out. Let you see it as a whole. And once I get the rest of them done, we'll take a look at every single one of them when I get them done. But that is the finishing result, and that's how you apply the stair nosing. Okay, so we have got the steps done. This is the very bottom floor in the basement. There is the trim piece on, and... Um, Let's see if it show. It ain't going to show. I'll show you upstairs what I did that I normally don't do just to add a little bit of pizzazz. The edges are still not complete. The gentleman that, um, the general contractor is going to finish off the edges and I will show you up here where he got started and didn't get a chance to finish, but I measured over and got them exactly right so he could finish them easily. Okay, so that's what I was wanting to show right there. How we run the boards um, up and down there just exactly in the same pattern and everything as the landing. Normally I would have put one flat piece on there, but I thought Ben's that was a landing and just to keep it all laying the same direction and plus it adds just a little pizzazz it took a little bit more time but it was worth it because it looks good and here are some more steps once again i think i've been up and down these things about a thousand times but These are finished. You can see what he's going to do to them right there. This is all he got done today. He's going to actually do the same thing to that right there as well. So these are finished products on this level right here. Let me show you a side view of that. It'll turn out pretty nice. And um, right here I had to do a little bit of cutting with the jigsaw to make that go around like that. 
that transition piece, but it turned out okay. Had just enough pieces for each step, so everything I couldn't couldn't afford a mess up at all. And these are them looking down. You can even see more down through there. Okay. Once again, I want to thank you from Floors by Sutherland Boys. Thank you for watching.